I've been in business specializing in sales and marketing since 1980. I'm an executive coach, an international trainer and speaker, an author, a TV show host, husband, and father. Like many, I've experienced a freak accident and almost died from it. The impact from a hit to the back of my head dissected an artery in my brain, and a few days later, I had a significant cerebellar stroke. Since my stroke, I've been researching and seeking answers to many of the questions that come to light when you live through a traumatic event like this. I'll share what I've learned about living full out, how to prosper in difficult times. We'll talk about some current events and always end with some inspiration and encouragement that you just might need at this particular moment. This is Scott Schilling Speaks. Scott Schilling Speaks is powered by Be Connected, the premier online hub for business owners and professionals to connect and collaborate for greater success. To learn how Be Connected will help you and your business, go to bkfreefor3.com. Hi, and welcome to Scott Schilling Speaks. I'm Scott Schilling and really excited about today's show because I've got an absolute legend on our show today. He's a dynamic speaker. He's world renowned. He's one of the most asked for motivational speakers on the planet. He's done events to as much as 80,000 people. And I also get to call him friend. My good friend, Les Brown. Les, thanks for joining me here on the show. It's a pleasure to be with you and such a really honor to be a part of a person that I believe is one of the top motivational speakers on the planet. You've been changing people's lives for a long time. And you're not just a great messenger, but you are the message that you bring. You've been, you've overcome some stuff. So that <laughs> makes you special. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Les. I, I greatly appreciate the kind words. Now, talk about somebody who's overcome some stuff. Uh, that would be one Les Brown. And I love the listening, all the events that we've done together. I love listening to your stories because you are the master storyteller. Where did it all come from? The learning how to tell stories I learned from my mother. As you know, I was born in an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother. We were six weeks of age. We were adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. She was 46 years of age, had third grade education, never had any children, but she always wanted to share her life with some kids. And I always say that I'm here because of two women. One gave me life, the other one gave me love, that God took me out of my biological mother's womb and placed me in the heart of my adopted mother. And, and I used to go to work with her because her, her friends in the neighborhood say, we'll keep the other six, but Leslie, I think you will have to take him to work with you because he's a little touched in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so mama took me to work with her. And I always talk about this in my book called You've Gotta Be Hungry, the birth of hunger in me. Uh, one of the incidences was when I went to work with her, the lady name is Harris. And Ms. Harris told her to go into a room and, and find a purple hat that she's looking for. It was sunny outside. And my mother went in the room and all of a sudden, I heard my mother clapping her hands, God. And I was curious, but she told me to clean some spots up off the kitchen floor. And I said, Mama, what is it, Leslie? Why are you clapping your hands? She said, don't you worry. You just do what you're supposed to do. And she came out of the room and she said, Miss Harris, I think it's in another room, but it's not in there. So Miss Harris told her, go down the hall and go in that room on the left. And she did. And once again, when my mother got in the room, she started clapping her hands. And I said, Mama, she said, what is it, Leslie? She's irritated now. Why are you clapping your hands? I, and she said, didn't I tell you just do what you're supposed to do? And at that moment, Ms. Harris rushed over to me and she looked down at me. She said, I can tell you why she's cap cl clapping her hands. Because when I have help looking for something and I can't see them, I make them clap their hands to make sure they're not stealing. And I dropped the cloth and the soap and stood up and looked her in the eyes. 
And this time, you know, I'm 75. Black people were not allowed to look white people in the eyes. I said, Ms. Harris, my mother is not a thief. She loves you. She loves your children. And she won't steal from you or anyone. She's a Christian. She loves doing a good day's work. And she was startled and just walked away from me. And I started scrubbing that floor again. And I said to myself, because mama told me when I turned 18, I'll be a man. When I turn 18, nobody will ever make my mother clap her hands because they think that she's stealing. And that was the birth of hunger in me <laughs> for a bigger life, a greater life. That is so awesome. I, I have never heard that story. And I thought I heard all your stories at this point. No, you know, man, you I know, got the stories. Oh, I know you do. The, the one that really... Uh, I am so uh, impressed by is when you were classified incorrectly in grade school, right? It, yes, when I was in the fifth grade, I was labeled educable, mentally retarded and put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade. And I failed again in the eighth grade. I have no college training, but I had this high school teacher who said to me, Mr. Brown, I want you to go up front and work this problem out for me. And I said, I can't do that, sir. And he said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. I'm just looking for MacArthur Stevens. He said, do it anyhow. And I said, I can't, sir. And then the other students started laughing, saying, he's Leslie. He's got a twin brother, Wesley. Wesley's smart. He's DT. And he asked, what's DT? He's the dumb twin. And I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk. He looked at me. He said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And on one hand, I was humiliated, but on the other hand, I was liberated because he looked at me with the eyes of Goethe, who said, look at a man the way that he is, he only becomes worse, but look at him as if he were what he could be, then he becomes what he should be. And he became my mentor. I, I latched on to him. I would not let him out of my sight. I've never known my biological mother or father, but I just admired his confidence and his communication skills and I wanted to be like him. Well, and you've done such an amazing job of it. I mean, sometimes you have to have somebody else believe in you before you believe in you. And he obviously did. And, and because of that, the ripple effect he's caused with the millions of people that you've talked to ever since, it made you hungry, didn't it? Yes, it most certainly is. I, I, I was hungry for a better life. I believe that it was possible. I made up my mind that it was necessary. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. And I took on what George Bernard Shaw said. He said, the people that make it in this life, they look around for what they want. And if they can't find them, they create them. So I took responsibility, but I also knew it would be hard. If you do what is easy, quit, come up with excuses. Life will be hard, but if you, Say to yourself, I'm going to make this happen no matter what. That will really make life easy because you're willing to do the work. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Absolutely awesome. Well, and I love that 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 was your foundation that you learned at such an early age because you kept on putting it into place. I love the story about how you started your radio career. I mean, yes. now there's some some moxie right there. Right. Yeah, Mr. Washington said, Mr. Brown, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I want to buy my mother a home. He asked, how do you plan to do that? I said, I'd like to become a disc jockey. I used to listen to Paul Harvey all the time. And I just became fascinated with radio. And he told me three things that's very important that's usable today. One, develop your mind. Quoting Earl Nightingale, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Two, develop your communication skills. Once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. And three, practice the principle of OQP, only quality people create collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. And that's what Be Connected is about. It's about the, the connections that you can create. And attention is the new currency. Your ability to attract attention 
create an experience to hold the attention and to direct the attention. And so I went to this radio station to apply for a job. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I'd like to be a disc jockey. And he asked me, he said, do you have any journalism? I said, no. Any experience at all? I said, no. But let me audition for you, sir. sir. Let me show you how good I am. And he said, no. I went back to Mr. Washington. I said, he said, no. He said, don't take it personally. He said, most people are so negative. They must say no seven times just to say it. He said, you got to be hungry. Go back again. So I went back again. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. I know what your name is. Weren't you here yesterday? Yes, sir. Didn't I tell you no yesterday? Yes, sir. Then why are you back today? Well, sir, I, I didn't know whether or not someone was laid off or somebody was fired. No one was laid off or fired. Now, get on out of here. I came back the next day talking loud, looking happy, like I was singing for the first time. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. I know what your name is. Weren't you here the last two days? Yes, sir. Didn't I tell you no the last two days? Yes, sir. Then why are you back today? Well, sir, I don't know whether or not someone got sick or someone died, sir. No one got sick or died. No one was laid off or fired. Now, don't you come back here again. I came back the next day, talking loud, looking happy, like I'm singing for the first time. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you? He looked at me with rage. He says, go get me some coffee. I said, yes, sir. I teach the greatest among you will be your servant. If people who are serious about their goals, who are hungry, you provide more service than you get paid for. When you're hungry, you make know your vitamin because you know you will fail your way to success. When you're hungry, you're willing to do whatever is required to make your dream become a reality. So I became the errand boy, errand boy for the disc jockeys. Go get their lunch and their dinner and just wait around and watch them work in their hands on the control board, knowing my time will come. And then one day, a Saturday afternoon, a disc jockey by the name of Rock and Roger was drinking while he was on the air. Rock and Roger got so drunk he could not complete his show. It was a Saturday afternoon, and I was the only one there looking at it through the control room window, saying, drink, rock, drink, drink, rock. I'd have gone get him some more, Scott. And then pretty soon the general manager answered for I said, hello. He said, young boy, this is Mr. Klein. I said, I know. He said, rock can't finish his program. I said, I know. He said, do you know how to work the controls? I said, yes, sir. I hung the phone up. I said, uh, he must be thinking I'm crazy. I called my mom and my girlfriend, Cassandra. I said, y'all come out on the front porch. I'm about to come on the air. I called him about 20 minutes later. I said, Mr. Klein, I can't find nobody. He said, young boy, you know how to work the controls? I said, yes, sir. He said, go on there and segue the records, but don't you say nothing here. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I got a rock out of the way. I got behind the microphone. I said, look out. This is me, LB, Triple P. Les Brown, your platter playing papa. There were none before me, and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single and love to mingle. Certified, bonafide, dubitably qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. Look out, baby. I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that story. You know, there's so many lessons to be learned there, and, and especially with what we're going through in the world today, right? Not the ideal situation for people. I was actually doing a, somebody else's show this morning, and I said, some people are screaming like Chicken Little, the sky has fallen, the sky has fallen, and some people are saying, you know what? Even though things aren't perfect, all things work together for my good. Didn't say all things were easy or all things were, were good, all things work together for my good. Now, I heard you That's doing a third thing in the morning. All things work together for my good, for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Absolutely. And and so I, I was listening to you on a, another podcast last week or so, and you were talking about fear and faith. And I'd love yeah. for you to talk about that here. 
as Zig Ziglar said, when most people in a fearful place and they use an acronym, he said, they forget everything and run. But there are few people, the road to life is straight and narrow and few there be that find it. He said, there are few people who face everything and rise. And this is what your program is designed to do, to allow people to be concerned, keeping social distancing from people and the refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> and, and being concerned and rise to the occasion to live in the now, tomorrow's not promised, to do what you can now, to reinvent yourself, to rethink your life, have goals beyond your comfort zone. Why? Because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. And you've got to ask yourself the question, what work do I need to be engaged in to make a radical change in myself so that I can be at the top of my game when I come out of where we are right now. Because where we are has not come to stay, it has come to pass. Absolutely, I mean, it's so powerful and, and quite frankly, why I respect you so much. You, you've been through a tremendous amount. You're such a great inspiration. Uh, I, have, I always relish the times that we've been together because I always learn something from you. Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? Yes, and I learned so much from you. You are an icon in this industry, very modest. And I want to congratulate you on this show, but also for staying the course that you've answered the call in your life. As much as you have chosen this path, you were chosen for it. You've changed people's lives that you'll never meet. And it's, it's very important to know when you look at what you have gone through, I, I believe strongly that faith not tested, can't be trusted. And you kept the faith in spite of what happened to you, in spite of the accident, in spite of all the challenges that you fail and again and again and again in your recovery, but you came through on the other side stronger and using your experiences and your knowledge and your voice and story to inspire others. And that's needed now more than ever, because when there's hope in the future, it gives you power in the present. Well, thank you so much again for the kind words. Truly appreciated. And, and again, that's why I respect you so much, because you've, you've been through it. And you only learn, I, I think you learn so much more by going through as opposed to reading about or studying it, right? I mean, experience is a great teacher. A lot of times very expensive, yeah. but it's a great one. <laughs> You know, you know what? Uh, sometimes we feel like Mother Teresa, who said, "Lord, I know you know how much I can bear. I just wish you didn't have so much confidence in me." <laughs> isn't isn't that the truth? Or, or I know every once in a while I've said, "You know, I think I've been tested enough, and evidently yeah. I haven't been." <laughs> So right. pass this cup to somebody else. That's exactly it. Now you got a new great book. You gotta be hungry. Tell us about your book. The greatness within to win. People that are hungry are unstoppable. People that are hungry believe that you must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People that are hungry are willing to pay the price. They're willing to sacrifice. They become no matter what people. They, they have this determination and mental resolve. I've got this saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. <laughs> <laughs> and so people that are hungry keep on getting up again and again and again. <laughs> it certainly isn't about being knocked down. We're all going to have that. But like you say, yeah. it's about getting up and doing it. Now, where can people get your book? I just want to make sure they that, can go to that they get it. Dot com. I am com. I am hungry, Les Brown dot com. And, and people who would like to have one on one coaching on how to discover their power voice and how to take their life, their story, their skills and their passion for her helping people to the next level. 
they can email me directly, mention they saw me on your program. We'll do something special for them. And my email is lesbrown77 at gmail.com. lesbrown77 at gmail.com. That, that's wonderful. Certainly want to do that, too. I remember, um, I'm trying to, it's got to be at least 10, well, no, it's got to be 15 years ago. We were in Atlanta at a Better Trades event, and you had just kicked, your PSAs were down, you had just kicked cancer's butt. And you did 73 push-ups. Yeah. And, and yes. I was like, man, he's making us all look bad here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just talked to Jack Lane's wife last week. She, uh, she, she said, I heard you say that my husband was your hero. I said, yes, I got up to 142 consecutive push-ups. And, and Jack LaLanne was such a, 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 an icon when it came to health and fitness. And he was extraordinary and I admired him. And, and one of the things about this thing called life, we're gonna have things happen we can't anticipate. I remember when Dr. Alfred Gosen told me, Mr. Brown, you have cancer. You know, those, those are three most feared words in seven different languages. I said, what do you mean? He said, your PSA is 2,400. Now, right now, I was just at Cancer Centers of America yesterday. They say it's below zero at, a, at the level of a newborn baby. My doctor <laughs> said, whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. And so I said, what else do you like to tell me? He said, the cancer metastasized to seven different areas of your body. I started smiling. He said, why are you smiling? I said, man. Seven is my lucky number. I'm one of seven children. I was born February the 17th. Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho seven times. Naaman dipped himself in the River Jordan seven times. Seven is my lucky number. He looked at his nurse and said, this is a strange one here. <laughs> I said, can you give me a second opinion? He said, yes, and you're ugly too. <laughs> Ugly. Yes, I did. You're ugly, ugly, in fact, but you got this. He said, we determine the diagnosis. You and God determine the prognosis. I never tell my patients they're terminally ill. What I say is that my knowledge, my abilities, and my skills have terminated. Now you need to explore some other options. That was 27 years ago, and I'm still here and kicking because of God's grace and mercy. Absolutely. It very, it, see, that's one of the things that we share. When I was, uh, after my stroke, I was sitting in the hospital and the doctors kept on saying, you know, you're not supposed to be alive. And I, it got me a little upset. And at one point I said, sorry to disappoint you. I've always been an overachiever. I lived. <laughs> it, it, and, uh, they, they said, uh, we just don't understand. I said, I got it all figured out. And they said, okay, smart butt, not exactly what they said, but what uh, is it? I said, it's obvious. It's God's grace, mercy, and favor on my life. Mm -hmm. He's also Absolutely. had that for you as well. You know, I just, that's yes. why you are so infectious. Your laugh is so infectious, everything. How long do you want to keep on inspiring the world, Us. You know, my kids ask me that because they feel like I'm in the fourth quarter and, and I'm looking younger and have more fire in my belly. And I said, it takes longer to wear out than to rust out. And I said, I'm going to speak my way out of here. I said, but if they tell you that I've died, don't let them embalm me for three days. And sneak <laughs> in there and put a microphone in my hand. If I don't grab it and say, you got to be hungry, you can say, that's gone now. <laughs> I, I love that. And I love what you were saying before we officially went on with your COVID hair. You know, until until it's with it, go ahead and say it the way you said it. It was yeah, until fresh. my barber learns how to keep a social distance of six feet to cut my hair, he can't come near me. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to wear his mask below his nose. I said, no, 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 no. Hope we don't play that. So you learned how to cut my hair from over there. I'm going to be here. I'm not willing to die for a haircut. 
<laughs> um, you know, there's a movie called House Party, a kid in play, and I'm kid. <laughs> That's awesome. We're we're coming we're coming towards the end. Les, what last piece of wisdom can you share with the audience? I mean, this has been so valuable. I always learn things. I know our audience are learning things from you here today. Leave them with one last wow. Elsie Robinson said something that I've been meditating on because I lost a very good friend yesterday. She made her transition and she lived a life of impact. He said, things may happen around you and things may happen to you, but the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. This is a time that we want to be concerned, but not consumed. Concerned to do the things we need to do in social distancing to stay alive, but not consumed with fear because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind and decide to live a life that will outlive us. We were here to do something. You brought something here that was not here before you showed up. You are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that. That great wisdom in that. I'd love for you to sign off the way you did about um, Mamie Brown the way you did for so many times. Yeah, this if you want to think bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want, with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity. If neither poor poverty, famish, or gulf, or sickness, or pain, of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want. If dogged and grim, you besiege and beset it. With the help of God, you'll get it. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's Baby Boy and Scott Chilling's Pride and joy. God bless you and God bless your dream. Thank you so much, Les. Just thank you for being here. You've been an absolute joy as you always are. For those of you who want more information about Les, about his books, about his prodigy program, about all the different things he has, simply text what now, one word, what now to 72,000 and we'll make sure that we connect you with Les and all of his support materials. I mean, here's a man that I know w when I first shared the stage way back when I was so honored just to be in your presence and I still am today. You are absolutely an amazing human being. Thank you for what you've done for so many. Thank you for what you continue to do and you ain't in the fourth quarter, brother. You just passed halftime. So you, you, you got <laughs> work to do. Much. Yeah, I tell you, I used to think people in their 40s were old. Now that I'm 75, <laughs> I, say, I served at the Lord's Supper. But you're very modest. You're one of the icons in this industry. And I've learned a lot from you, studying you, watching you. And I value our friendship. And thank you for who you are and for answering the call on your life. Because as much as you have chosen this path, you were chosen for this path. A job is what you get paid for. Your calling is what you're made for. You were made to change lives. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and I appreciate it. Thank you much. Everybody, we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Schilling signing off. Scott Schilling Speaks. God bless. Connections are the lifeblood to grow your business. But current times have made quality connections hard to find, if not impossible. This is why Be Connected created the Connection Generator, a highly sophisticated, powerful search engine algorithm that will completely revolutionize the way you network and accelerate your results. Now you can experience the Connection Generator for free. Once set up, instantly the Connection Generator delivers the right people for your business using its proprietary artificial intelligence matchmaking technology. Think of it like dating software, but for the business world, we just change the questions. Instant messaging, 
multiple ways to connect, and a five-star user-generated rating system creates an experience that eliminates spam and wasted effort without ever leaving your home or office. During your free trial, you'll see the connection generator is super simple to use. In fact, people from all backgrounds and industries, from CEOs to entrepreneurs to work-at-home moms, use the connection generator to find their ultimate business connections. When you sign up for your free trial offer, you'll discover the connection generator scans industry, geographic location, and even target audiences to match you to the very best of the best, to include highly successful leaders just like you. So if you're ready to start leveraging technology, you're just a click away from activating your free trial and instantly connecting to exact matches just for you. Once you're a member, best of all, we can show you how to qualify for free continuing membership. It's our way of saying thanks for being a part of Be Connected. So what are you waiting for? Click now and get started today for free.